Yo, what's up everybody? This is International Master Daniel Wrench. This is Chess.com's YouTube channel. And today we're back with another exciting video here on our chess openings playlist. Things that you need to know for your tournament chess career. And here today we've got the Grunfeld defense, as you can see from the title, which starts after d4, knight f6, c4, g6, knight to c3, and the move d5. Those of you who follow our playlist here closely and subscribe to our channel know that I've already covered the King's Indian defense, which goes after bishop to g7, e4, and eventually d6, and uh, this would be a mainline King's Indian. But, as said, today we are not talking about the King's Indian, we are talking about the slightly more aggressive brother opening, you might call it, as it starts out with the same first two moves, but then black quickly takes a more aggressive approach, challenging white center, and in doing so, making an, taking an inherent risk in terms of his positional ideas. And before I talk about that inherent risk, I want to back up and explain one basic fundamental idea behind the queen's pawn opening rather than the king's pawn, for example, if we were talking about a regular queen's gambit, is that white chooses to challenge the center with pawns more directly. Why is this important for the Grunfeld? Because the idea is that white wants to put pressure against this pawn, hoping for black to take it. Why? In many cases, if black takes it, if he doesn't get immediate pressure against the d-pawn, or if he doesn't know opening theory, white may eventually just pick up this pawn right back and in turn have a great center because what he did by giving up the C pawn was force black to give up a center pawn for a wing pawn. Take a good look at this type of position here and note that this type of pawn structure would be considered a positional advantage for white and one of the main ideas behind playing a queen's pawn game to begin with. So when we back up and take a look at the Grunfeld, we notice that the idea of playing d5 seems a little bit counterintuitive for black. After white captures on d5 and plays e4, hasn't white just achieved exactly what he wants in the queen's pawn game to begin with, whether it would be a Grunfeld or a queen's gambit or any kind of opening? That is a great pawn center, a great pawn formation that is giving white a ton of space. Well, what black gets in return for that is compensation. To talk about the compensation, we flip the board here and show that after the move knight takes c3, b takes c3, black has, yes, given white this great center. However, in capturing on c3 and forcing this pawn to come here, he's created a target along this long diagonal, the a1, h8 diagonal. After the move bishop to g7, black intends to develop his pieces with specific purpose to play c5, to play knight to c6, to develop this queen to either b6 or a5, or in some cases c7, with all of those moves putting pressure against white's dark squares, and eventually he may even use the d8 square for a rook. So, black, as we said, has given white a positional advantage in order to have something to attack, right? He's given his opponent a bone so that he can go and try and get it. Now, if white doesn't understand how to develop, let's say he plays moves like knight f3 and uh, bishop e2, which are both totally okay moves, but if, if black is able to increase his pressure and white doesn't understand what to do here, like an awkward move such as bishop f4, for example, here black has already played several moves that are putting direct pressure against white center, and now moves like bishop g4 might eliminate this knight, which can only help black and his goal to win d4, as the knight is a critical defender. Moves like queen b6 and queen a5 are possible, and all of them together should be considered. After move bishop g4, black might consider this, perhaps bring the other two rooks to the center, and put pressure against white's great pawn. So yes, white has a center, but the center at this point is a target. So, if you're white and you're playing against the Grunfeld, how might you choose to develop in order to be best prepared for black's plans of c5 and knight to c6 and, and basically pressure along this long diagonal? Noted again should be that usually moves like capturing the pawn don't relieve the pressure as they almost always unleash instant tactics for this hidden dragon over there, crouching bishop on g7, hidden dragon. That's right, I just did a Chow Yun fan reference here in the crouching tiger hidden dragon reference of the opening. That's hysterical let's be honest. Anyway, so um, how should white develop in order to be ready for these types of breaks? Well, typically the best move has been considered to be this move bishop to c4. Why? Because after c5, you can now use the square e2 without blocking your own bishop on f1. The knight on e2 is best placed for defending not only d4, but also this potentially weak c3 pawn. After moves like castles, castles, knight to c6, but white can continue with moves like bishop e3, and we see all of white's pieces coordinating to the best effort, to the best of their abilities to defend this, these uh, 
uh, critical dar squares. And if he's able to achieve such a defense and continue with, let's say, moves like rook c1 and, and bring more pieces to the center, then this positional advantage that black gave him back in the beginning of, of the game, being these two pawns here, will indeed come to something. So as I'm, as I'm saying, if, if black played, let's say, purely passive moves with no plan at all, um, you know, randomly awkward moves, white will bring all the pieces to the center and eventually really be happy with his space advantage that restricts his opponent's pieces. So this main line usually when white plays this way is met by a, a dynamic plan for black which involves taking on d4, pinning the knight on e2, and eventually playing for dynamic play that goes like this where white actually can sacrifice the exchange along this diagonal in order for a very strong mating attack but black has the long-term advantage of material and a potential two-on-one majority. Now what I just did right there is give you a little inside information to the deeper theory of the line but in these types of uh, videos here we don't have time to discuss everything on a very deep theoretical level so what you've gotten here is a basic summary of the philosophy behind the Grunfeld defense. I am giving white an advantage in the center in order to have a target for the rest of the game as I prepared my pieces to be ready to challenge these squares and from white's perspective white should know to develop the bishop and bring the knight to e2 where it is best placed to defend these center pawns develop his pieces accordingly afterwards and hopefully hold on to the center to have a better a better position if you're white so uh, that's the Grunfeld in uh, under seven minutes and I hope you enjoyed it hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you around on chess.com